Jonathan, uh, lately I was reading about the Bono's book, which is called Simplicity. And uh, it was a quite interesting about the Bono, how he embraced mil minimalist lifestyles. And uh, he also encouraged the users how to, you know, to embrace the, uh, you know, uh, simplicity, you know, take out all the clutterness and, uh, and how to, com you know, embrace the simplicity in our, our lifestyle. So, and uh, I think you, De Bono is one of your favorite author. And uh, uh, a few weeks ago, you talk about, you know, how this simplicity has uh, uh, used in your teaching of architectural technology. Could you please explain me how did you do that? How did you lecture to the students in that sense? So one of the concepts of simplicity, it, I mean, it's quite a complex book. Stra ironically, considering it's all about simplicity, yeah. there's, there's actually a lot in it. Things about simplicity that he said is that we should teach backwards. And it took Ooh. me ages to figure out what he meant by teaching backwards. But he was saying that we should really teach the alphabet backwards. So instead of teaching A, B, C, D, we should actually teach A, B, A, C, B, A, D, C, B, A. And I think it was a really poor example that he used for that, of that teaching mm -hmm. backwards. But what I really think he was trying to get at was that when you teach, you should always try to relate to something that the students have already learned. So for example, today I was teaching manual drafting, doing a section through a building, showing the floor joists and the bearers and all that kind of stuff, and the piles and the flooring. So yesterday, the students had a lesson, with a physical lesson, where the, the tutor actually had real piles and real bearers and real joists, and he had just four, four piles and enough, enough bearers and joists. And so I was teaching drawing, but I managed to connect the drawing to something that they'd done yesterday. So always, yeah. so, and that's what I think De Bono meant by teaching backwards. You're referring back to something that they already know. Because I often think of teaching new skills as, it's old school, but pigeonholes. In, in the old days, mm -hmm. we used to, you used to get mail, you go to a mail room, there's all these little slots for, yes. for your mail and the, and the pigeonholes. And I often think of the, the student's brain as being a bit like the pigeonholes, where there's some information there and you're trying to cram new information. But if you can put that information close to something that they already have, that information can actually latch on to something and it can latch on yeah. to a piece of existing information. And that's what I think yeah. De Bono was getting at, that idea that you can teach, you can teach connected to things that are already existing. Oh yeah, that's. Uh, I just had a thought. Like uh, one of the, uh, I think one of the uh, Steve Jobs interview, and he is he was talking about joining the dots, joining the dots to make create uh, make a creations because you know how I think one of the in interview he was talking about how Macs or how iPhones. You know, iPhones has been created. It's just uh, connecting. Just, oh, not not joining. It's the, he, what he's mentioned is connecting the dots. For example, like, yeah, so uh, that was his commencement yeah. address at Stanford University, and he was yeah, saying how yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, as, as he learned, he learned lots of different things yes. in his life, yes. and it wasn't till later that he learned that all those things connected together. Together. So that's what uh, I think it's the same thing like the Bono theories, like, you know, it's what the students has already know and we connect the dots for them and which makes uh, much better for the cognitive the uh, cognitive way of thinking. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, I did, really I did, interesting. I, I, was, I, I used to do a lot of flying and a lot of traveling. And I used to mm -hmm. always have a book to read on the plane. I'd always be reading. And, and the mm -hmm. Bono was a really good book to read because it was, it really made you think heavy. And this is the days before you could just sit and have a podcast or an audio book read it for you. Uh, you actually yeah. had to physically think about what you're reading. You And it gave me loads and loads of ideas. And one of the nice, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things he said about simplicity is that it's actually simplicity isn't easy. I mean, no, if you look at today Oendo's architecture, it looks beautifully simple, but there's so yeah. much hard work goes into that simplicity. It's so much easier to, to make it look complex because you can just stick another thing on it but to reduce yeah. that down is really difficult and in a way with our drawings that's what we really need to get our students to understand is that they need to um they need to edit what they're writing 
down until mm -hmm. it gets to the nub of the issue to, so that we don't have a lot of waffling. One of the things that yeah. we've done with our students is to limit the number of words they can write for an, for an answer. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you've got you've only got one page, you've got 500 words to write the answer to this. Oh, but I want I need 2000 words. Well, mm -hmm. you haven't got it. You can if you can't say it <clears throat> in a in a logical way in 500 words, you don't understand the principles the that we're talking about. Yes. And that and that that kind of goes back to what Edward de Bono is saying is, you know, removing all the complexity until you get to just the most important issues. Um, and the simplicity. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I used to say to my kids was when they did, they did their, their school homework, they'd say, oh, it's good enough. And I'd always say good enough is not good enough. And sometimes we, we fail our students because we let them do good enough work good enough. when we mm -hmm. should really be encouraging excellence. Um, yeah. And that extra step of excellence is what takes a lot of hard work. And Edward de Bono says that good is the enemy of the best. Yeah. When you get a good answer, you go, right, I've got a good answer, I'll stop. And that's the whole problem. It's the enemy of the best answer. And, yeah. um, and I think that limiting what the student can say is forcing them to not just come up with a good answer, but actually filter it and edit it again so that they've got the best answer. Yeah. So it's also encouraged their critical thinking because otherwise, no, and also... Yeah, they need to cons uh, being a concise and uh, uh, on dot message is the skills, right? Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, yeah. So otherwise, you know, uh, some people they talk talk, and uh, after that, it's, everybody forget. You know, it's like a shot to the point and attack it, and uh, yeah, that's that's a good I, good way of doing that. You imagine a construction management consult, you know, you, you teach the CM students, the construction management yes, students. Yes, I do. Imagine if they wrote a variation that was two pages long. Now nobody reads it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. nuts to think about. So if you're going to write an instruction to the contractor, it's got to be succinct. It's got to be clear. Yeah. And that is really going to that, to that heart of that simplicity of making sure that what you say is exactly the right thing to say, but you've said it in the shortest possible way so it's clear and unambiguous. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of, uh, there was one uh, one instance when I, uh, happens in my life, you know, when I send an email, I thought it's an instruction to the, that's what I thought, and I thought this is an instruction to the, uh, the subcontractors when I was young, and uh, I put, uh, just to, oh, that, it's just an email, and, uh, uh, I think I put it like a, just to let you know or something, and then say. Uh, next day I went to the site and is he you know, is he doing no? He said you said just to let you know that's been it said for information only. It's not for construction, so your information <laughs> is not clear, <laughs> or something like you know it's something like that you know is oh, okay you know oh I think it was just to. Uh, protect him for not, you know not to make mistake or something like that and uh, you know just to let you know don't do that and is that no it's just you're giving just for information so I keep on doing it because I, I doesn't means that I need to follow your answer is not clear so it's mm -hmm. the language is also important uh, you know just simplicity language now we are talking about that yeah yeah that's that's so very good uh, I mean, just to get rid of the simplicity book, that was that learn was yeah. to teach connected to 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 existing yeah. information as much as you can. Yes. And make sure yeah. that when you're teaching one subject, that it actually mm -hmm. connects them to the other subjects that the students are learning so that they see yeah. that architecture is a holistic principle. Yes. Um, the other yes. the other book that I really like from Edward de Bono is The Six Thinking Hats, which is a, yeah. a great, a great way of group work. If you mm -hmm. can get the groups mm -hmm. to think of the six hats. I've forgotten which what they are. It's just like red, blue, green. Uh, white, red, black, r yellow, green, uh, blue. Yes, yes. Blue uh, sky yeah, thinking was... is blue. Black is is yeah. factual. What are the facts yeah. here? Red is emotional. Um, what? Emotional. How do we feel emotionally about this issue? And the whole principle yeah. of the six thinking hats is to is for the the group to go through the six hats and look at this problem from the same point of view in each case. 
And I did a sketch. Yeah. I, I wrote a review of the book and I, I put a sketch. I don't know if I've seen it to you. <laughs> it Two it people looking uh, at a building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is quite From, interesting. You start talking about how to teach architectural technologies by using six thinking hats. I never thought about that because you know six thinking hats has been used a lot in you know a lot and discussed so much so in the business world. They you know they appoint uh, they have a business meeting and they approach the problems and how to solve. Uh, the business and the opportunities how they think about that that is you know that was i have i've been reading about it and how the that uh, the practical application about that so now you're talking about uh edward bono's that uh, this six thinking hats book and that concept brings into the architectural technologies architectural technology class and uh, how did you how did you do that did you how did you assign the students and how did you make the students to to walk each other in that way well it, it was a group activity and i actually didn't yeah. guide them very much but i just told mm -hmm, them to use mm -hmm. that as a strategy uh, because mm -hmm. it turned out that my daughter got taught how to use the six thinking hats at primary school wow and that's um, very young it was really young. It was really young to think that, that, that they were teaching that stuff. But anyway, I, I said to myself. I in my primary too. <laughs> so, By the way, so I we're doing it in my primary too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we were doing group work and there was, you know, there's the students are always looking at the, at the, at the problem from a different, different point of view. And so I mm -hmm. said to them, what you need to do is you need to think of the six thinking hats and they, and some of them went, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we studied that at, at primary school or intermediate or something, but wow. I didn't think it was any use. Mm -hmm. um, and so I tried to encourage them to to look at because the, this group activity is is about um, developing a master plan and and, and sustainable ideas. Mm -hmm. And the challenge mm -hmm. is that everybody's looking at the problem from a different point of view. And if you can get them to think of the problem from the same point of view, then there's not so much in the way of argument, but there's a lot more discussion involved and so that's what i tried to do it's not always successful because they yeah. don't want to read the book um so you really mm -hmm. need the, the the opening synopsis which is actually really simple the the i think it's a one pager description of of what each hat does he's managed to turn it into an entire book where it goes into loads of detail on the white hat and the red hat and and so yeah. on but actually all you need is the chat gtp um, so summary of the whole thing, and <laughs> it'll tell you exactly what the book is all about. I mean, that's yeah, another that's, topic that's we should really good. talk about AI and what that does, but that's yeah. a whole nother topic. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, th those are books that I read while I was, um, you know, while I was thinking about my business. And remember that I used to write lots of training manuals, and so I yes, was always looking for books that would help me teach other people. Mm -hmm. And those two books were really good about. Um, you make, getting people to think, because the the, yeah. the other thing about the six thinking hats is to help people think laterally, and I think Edward mm -hmm. de Bono was the guy who co who coined lateral thinking. Yes. Um, yes. So that was the so the six the six thinking hats was one of those, and and but simplicity really related to the way that I wanted to write my manuals because I needed them to yeah. be clear and succinct and Concise. and and I needed to. Uh, also, that connecting, I, I, I worked, I did connecting a lot of dots. work making sure, connecting connecting to previous information, but yes. yeah, or connecting the dots. So those, yeah, were the, yeah. those were the books that I thought were quite fun. I mean, from, a, from an architectural point of view, there's loads of books that we should read. I found a great yes. one called, so the book was called Studio Craft and Technique for Architects. It's a beautiful little book. It's, a, yes. it's, a, um, it's not a hardcover, but it's a stitched book. So it's all stitched together, mm -hmm. so it's going to last a long time. And, and it's about the size of, the, of a pattern language. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you've got a pattern language book. Christopher uh, Alexander, can, do you remember his book? I can, see the, I can see the size of the book from the website, yes. Yeah. This one, yeah, the old pattern, pattern language. language. So it's about that big, but it's not quite as thick as a pattern language. But it covers everything, like how to draw stairs and... How mm -hmm. to sharpen a pencil and how to hold a T square and and how to how to glue stuff and how to it's use the, tools and all, how to draw perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, just everything that a student needs to pass our courses yeah. is in that book. 
Um, mm-hmm. And it's a fantastic little book. It cost me $60, I think, in New Zealand. It's $40 wherever that website is that I just found in Australia, by the looks of it. Yeah, US dollar. Oh, that's that's Um, not that expensive now. So Mm -hmm. that's not not too dear. I mean, when you compare it to um, anatomy books, you know, at $125 for each course, you know, the students are paying, you know, hundreds of dollars for each textbook for each course. And we're saying, here's one book, it'll do the entire course for you. Um, Yeah. So it would be, it's really useful. But that, that is a fantastic book. You know, it's got things like mm-hmm. the, the rules for stairs and, and what, it, you know, what how rises should be and how to draw them, how to detail a stair. It's just got so much in it. It's really cool that directly relates to, to the course we teach. Uh, by the way, when I was young, I also read, uh, you know, you know, Francis D.K. Ching, which is, yes. I think he's, he's the architect from uh, Chicago. And uh, I found it is very useful for young architects, you know, because I can see all the you know, beautiful architectures and his sketches on in this books are amazing, I believe. Archite- the book and, is uh, called Architectural Drafting or Architectural Drawing. Yes, um, and uh, after that he has come. Uh, you know, he has now he has so many books. On that, you know, and also it is very good example of show uh, to shows a uh, young architect or young young architectural technologies how to draw a proper labeling, proper design, the line weight, etc. It's very, mm-hmm. uh, it's a really good present. Yeah, hatching Shading. and yes, yes, and lot. also yeah, same thing, same thing. He shows you know as chapter by chapters how the, the two point what is the two points perspective three points perspective one point perspective etc yeah I've got, so, uh, i used to have one of his books but it fell to pieces and i don't know where i put it um, yeah but i i have it in library <laughs> i think there are three books in our library so yeah, yeah. he's written about four or five of them you know the tecton font is his handwriting mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah he it's amazing yeah, I think we covered uh, some of the uh, yeah, important. Yeah, it's probably time we wrapped it up. I mean, there's there's other books yeah, we, should... we could we could do, but but yeah, the, the the Francis Ching one is really good, and the Studio Craft for Architects is Miriam Delaney and Anne Gorman. Fantastic yeah. little book, really like it. Yes, um, yes, thoroughly recommend yeah. it. And then of course the 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 other ones that we talked about, the Edward de Bono, not directly yes. relatable for students, but really good for, for tutors i think yeah i think it's also uh highlight the soft skills of the for the tutors and also mm-hmm. you know and also it's good to for the students to read because it's getting yeah because uh we need to teach them the soft side of the architecture it's not about the technical and the uh, uh you know regulations and those, those kind of things at least they need to be a little bit of poetic or a bit of vulnerable side on it, so that it's it's more human, right? It's more human about that because architecture is, uh, you know, at the end is for the human, for the people. So you know, and if we keep on talking about building regulations, fire code, well, this these are important, but we also think like, uh, you know, we have heart, we have feelings, that is really good uh, uh, recommendations of recommendations to recommend uh, recommended books to read yeah uh, and also thanks for highlighting uh, the bono books to read as a tutors yeah all right so i think it's time to wrap it up and uh yeah. see you next week thanks take care Bye. take care